Hello, I am Dr. Wafa Ibadawi, a senior consultant histopathologist and head of pathology department, AKMICH, KSA. I am going to talk about epithelial neoplasms of the ovary, mucinous borderline tumor. General background. Mucinous borderline tumors are epithelial tumors composed of gastrointestinal type mucinous epithelium with limited epithelial stratification and cytologic atypia and no stromal invasion. They comprise approximately 10% to 15% of all ovarian mucinous neoplasms. They are the second most common subtype of ovarian borderline tumors in Western countries and the most common subtype in Asia. The mean age is 45 years, similar to mucinous carcinomas. Patients are often asymptomatic or present with abdominal enlargement or pain. Mucinous borderline tumors frequently show KRAS mutations. They are not associated with somatic or German line abnormalities of BRCA1 or BRCA2. They appear to follow an invariably benign clinical course and less associated with intraepithelial carcinoma. Gross appearance. Mucinous neoplasms in the borderline group are unilateral in more than 90% and are often larger than benign mucinous tumors. They can reach more than 30 cm. They have a smooth outer surface and are predominantly cystic, with frequent multiple locules containing mucoid material. It is important to note that Distinction of a mucinous borderline tumor from a benign or malignant mucinous tumor cannot be made based solely on gross examination. Extensive sampling is required. Recommended sampling is at least one section per centimeter in tumors less than 10 centimeters and two sections per centimeter in tumors equal or more than 10 centimeter, particularly directed to more complex microcystic or solid areas. Microscopic features. These two photos show interglandular proliferation and stratification of mucinous gastrointestinal type epithelium with villous papillary formation toward the cystilumin reminiscent of low grade dysplasia in intestinal epithelium. This photo shows a mucinous intestinal type epithelium with occasional goblet cells and papillary architecture tufting. They show mild cytologic atypia with a few mitotic figures. They have greater degree of cytologic atypia and proliferative changes than those seen in benign mucinous tumors, cyst adenomas, and lack destructive stromal invasion. Mucinous borderline tumor with microinvasion. This photo shows a haphazard infiltrative growth of small glands, individual cells, and nests 
measuring less than 5 mm in greatest dimension. High magnification reveals cytologic atypia and extracellular mucin around infiltrative nests of cells. When these foci are small, they are of uncertain prognostic significance, but their presence should prompt a search for frank invasive carcinoma. Areas of mucin extravasation with inflammatory response are not diagnostic of invasion. It should be noted that microinvasion does not warrant a diagnosis of carcinoma. Mucinous borderline tumor with intraepithelial carcinoma. The intraepithelial carcinoma shows marked cellular stratification, long cellular papillae, high grade nuclear features resembling high grade dysplasia of intestines. In this photo, the intraepithelial carcinoma shows marked cellular stratification, a cribriform pattern, high-grade nuclear features, and brisk mitotic activity. Intraepithelial carcinomas confined to the ovaries have an excellent prognosis, about 95% survival rate. Differential diagnosis. Metastatic mucinous adenocarcinoma to the ovary should always be strongly considered when evaluating an ovarian mucinous tumor. Features favoring primary ovarian mucinous tumor versus metastasis are unilaterality, size more than 10 cm, a smooth external surface that is absent ovarian surface involvement, mural nodules, accompanying benign and or mucinous borderline areas, teratoma, adenofibroma, endometriosis, or brenna tumor, expensile pattern of invasion that is absent destructive stromal invasion. Complex papillary pattern, microscopic cystic glands, necrotic luminal debris, absence of a history of a primary mucinous carcinoma at another site, multinodularity, hyla lymphovascular invasion, extra ovarian disease. Patchy positivity and heterogeneous distribution for cytokeratin 20 and CDX2. Negativity for SADB2, the vast majority of tumors. Home message. Please keep in mind that primary ovarian mucinous tumors are 10%. Metastatic ovarian mucinous tumors are 90%, so that mucinous carcinoma in the ovary is a metastasis until proven otherwise. Differential diagnosis. Mucinous cyst adenoma with focal proliferation. Tumors composed predominantly of cystadenoma with less than 10% of borderline mucinous tumor are diagnosed as mucinous cystadenoma with focal proliferation or focal atypia. The focal area less than 10% shows architectural complexity including papillae and tufting or nuclear pseudostratification and crowding. Pseudomyxoma peritonei, gelatinous ascites. It is a clinical term, not a histologic diagnosis. 
referring to intraperitoneal accumulation of mucin, secondary to mucinous neoplasia. It has been traditionally attributed to ruptured ovarian mucinous tumors or most commonly ruptured appendiceal mucinous neoplasia. These two photos show a low cellularity in the background of abundant mucin, low-grade disease, adenomucinosis. It is an extremely well-differentiated pseudomyxoma peritonei containing benign-looking columnar cells. High-grade mucinous carcinoma peritonei, high-grade peritoneal mucinous neoplasia, mucinous carcinomatosis showing malignant cells with cribriform architecture and prominent nuclear atibia. Treatment includes cytoreductive surgery with hyperthermic intraperitoneal chemotherapy, HIBIT, for low-grade disease and systemic chemotherapy for high-grade disease. Immunohistochemistry. Mucinous borderline tumors show diffuse and strong cytoplasmic membranous positivity for cytokeratin 7, patchy cytoplasmic membranous positivity for cytokeratin 20, patchy nuclear positivity for PAX8. 30% to 65%, a positive result is highly specific for primary ovarian origin. CDX2, negativity for SADB2. Metastatic colorectal carcinoma and low grade appendiceal mucinous neoplasm show. Diffuse and strong cytoplasmic membranous positivity for cytokeratin 20, negativity for cytokeratin 7 and PAX8, strong and diffuse nuclear positivity for CDX2, strong and diffuse nuclear positivity for SADB2. Please note that cytokeratin 7 and SADB2 are highly sensitive and specific for distinguishing primary ovarian mucinous tumors from colorectal and appendiceal metastasis. Please remember that ovarian mucinous tumors show gastrointestinal differentiation and are positive for CEA and cytokeratin 7. CK20 and CDX2 are positive in most cases, but typically with patchy and heterogeneous distribution. As an important caveat, a mucinous tumor arising in a teratoma will show an immunophenotype identical to primary lower gastrointestinal tumors, including positivity for SADB2. Higher SADB2 expression is associated with better prognosis and response to chemotherapy in metastatic colorectal carcinomas. Prognosis and therapy. Mucinous borderline tumors in the absence of intraepithelial carcinoma or frank carcinoma appear to follow an invariably benign clinical course. Occasional in less than 5% of mucinous borderline tumors with intraepithelial carcinoma have recurred as high-grade carcinoma, 
within five years of initial diagnosis. These tumors have been associated with a rapidly progressive cause, frequently with distant metastasis. Conservative surgery is appropriate in the initial management of these lesions, especially in young reproductive aged women. Unilateral salpingoophorectomy is a sufficient treatment in most cases, provided adequate sampling and exclusion of extra ovarian disease. Surgical staging should be considered for intraepithelial carcinoma and microinvasive carcinoma. There is no indication for adjuvant chemotherapy or radiation therapy. These are the references. Thank you.